Right, we are live, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We are back for another match of the URC. This one, the Stormers taking on Ulster, which promises to be a very entertaining game. The way that the table currently sits, these two sides both inside of the top eight, although they are starting to get a little bit closer towards that bottom end. They want to get themselves a comfortable victory here. The Stormers coming off a win last week up against Edinburgh, whereas Ulster suffering a loss. To the Sharks. Now, I should mention, we have just recently seen a game between the Ospreys and the Lions, which has allowed the Ospreys to leap up the table that little bit more. The Sharks getting themselves the win over Edinburgh more recently as well. So they have boosted themselves on the table. But looking through at the Stormers starting lineup, it will be Brock Harris, Joseph Dweba, and Johan Nilling for Shea there. As the front row, Salman Moura at four with Ruben van Heeren starting in as the five. Then Willie Ingelbrecht at six, Diamani at seven, and Evan Ruiz as the number eight. Now, this is a dangerous loose forward trio, and I am looking forward to seeing how Ulster try and counter it. Because, of course, we've seen Diamani. He's been one of the form players in that loose forward trio for any side throughout the URC. Evan Ruiz having a good performance last week, scoring himself a try or two. And then in this back line, they, of course... Have some superstars. Paul DeVette at number 9 with Marnie Lebok starting in as the 10. Damien Valimza, he will be playing the 12 role for this week with Dan Duplessis at number 13. Then Lillian Zas, Hudsonberg, and what a Kalant there as the Stormers. A back three looking through at the Ulster side, of course, still at number 1. Similar last week in their contest when they did play up against the Sharks. It will be Stephen Kitsoff, Rob Hearing at 2. And Tom O'Toole slotting in at the number three. Now, I should mention, depending on how early the Stormers make a sub at tight head prop, we could see in this game, Stephen Kitsoff versus Franz Malharba at scrum time. Now, that is a dream match. Of course, they've done a lot of training together for the Springboks, but we haven't seen them go head to head in an actual contest in quite some time. So, can't wait to see if that does take place. Sheridan and Treadwell will be the combination in the locking duo, but of course, closing out that front row for Ulster, it will be Rob Hearing as well as Tom O'Toole, Matty Rea at number six with McCann at seven, and Nick Timoney slotting in as the number eight. Cooney and Doak will be the 19 combo. McClowski in the midfield alongside James Hume, and then McElroy out on the left wing. Balakoon returns into the side at number 14. He did not play in a last week's contest, and Michael Lowry slotting in as the number 15. So two very good sides. Storm is coming as heavy. Advantaged in favour of their side. Also known as favourites. I don't know why I said that so weird. It is currently sitting about 6am here in New Zealand. And we have been awake for over 24 hours. So that is probably why the brain is struggling to put a sentence together. We have got there. Go the cash. Brumbies told you. And also Ulster score first try and kicks off that traitor. Says Bavani. I mean to be fair. Werner Cock is going to that same side next year. And he's going to be an extremely handy option for them in that back line. Kits off, of course, at scrum time. Always seems to have the advantage over his opposition. Uh, opposition. Also, the way that he wins turnovers in the breakdown can be massively beneficial. Uh, show me the money. Uh, let's do this, says Blues Nate. And what's your prediction for this game? I am predicting the Stormers to win it. I think that they'll do it relatively comfortably here, mainly because... Ulster in their game up against the Sharks, we never quite saw them reach that next gear. Of course, the Sharks getting themselves to win there 20 points to 12. But I still feel like there's a bit more in this Ulster team than what they showed in that first game. Just looking through at their recent five fixtures, 22 points to 12, in fact, that game up against the Sharks. The end score was they got themselves a win over the Dragons two weeks prior, 49 points to 26. They lost up against Ospreys, which, to be honest... Doesn't really surprise me at the moment. I think Ospreys are playing some very good rugby. They showed that in their contest up against the Lions when they recently got themselves that victory. And then two games in the Champions Cup, which they did lose. One to the Harlequins, one to Toulouse, which does mean that they are now through for the Challenge Cup round of 16 rather than the Champions Cup. Looking at the Stormers, they found some pretty good form as of late, although they did suffer that loss to the Bulls only a few weeks ago. They made drastic improvements from that game, though, getting a comfortable win over Edinburgh, and prior to that, winning up against the Sharks, Stade Francais, as well as the Sale Sharks. But they have got a rematch up against La Rochelle next week. That is going to be an awesome game. We are covering it on the channel, ladies and gents, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Looking through at the benches 
for this game. JJ Kotsia and number 16. They've got Leons is also alongside him. Franz Malharba there as the number 18. Adre Smith with Ben Jason Dixon and Marcel Dennison. So actually going with the 6-2 split in this game for the Stormers. Then Herschel Yankees and Ben Loder, the two back replacements who they will look to use later on in the game. For Ulster, they've got Tom Stewart, Warwick and Wilson. Cormac, or Izzy Cormac as I like to call him. That's normally his nickname and a lot easier way of saying it than the last name with Marcus Rea coming off the bench. Then Shanahan there at number 21. Flair, uh, Flannery at 22 and then Moore as the 23. But we are not too far away from the start of this contest, ladies and gentlemen. And WSP says Sean and Ghost Stormers go, says Godfrey Peterson in the chat as well. But do let me know your score predictions, ladies and gentlemen. Who do you feel will get themselves the victory here. Can the Stormers continue their winning form that they have had? As of late, like I mentioned, they are finding themselves in around fifth place at the moment on the table. They want to get further ahead and they want to turn that into a massive winning streak heading towards the final. Of course, they have been in both finals of the URC. The first one they managed to get themselves to win over the Bulls to take out the first ever URC title. And the second time, they lost narrowly to Munster and they love redemption here yeah, at the moment. Munster seem like they might even be a team that could miss out on the top six or the top eight, depending on how these next results do end up going. But it's all about putting results on the field. And in Cape Town, that is exactly what the Stormers will be hoping to do. But the next games, like I mentioned, the next one is actually going to be taking place from the exact same stadium. In fact, the next three, they've got their game of the Champions Cup up against La Rochelle. Last time that those two sides played in Cape Town, it was a narrow victory, but they did get the job done. The Ospreys and Leinster, two other sides. And I have to say, after the way that the Bulls went up against Leinster, having that game at home for the Stormers is a massive advantage, and they have to make the most of it. Because, or else, we could see Leinster continue to run away at the moment on the URC table. They are clear of any side by about the seven or eight points at the moment, I believe they sit. So that is the last thing that the South African Sides will be wanting. Looking through at the next games for Ulster, they have got the European Challenge Cup game up against Montpellier. Then they have got Cardiff, Benetton, Scarlets, and then that Irish derby up against Leinster in about 50 days' time. We have got there in the chat 31 19 to the Stormers, 28 13 to the Stormers, and Stormers to win or lose. Are you staying my team? Says William Moses, and I hope Leinster send their first team to South Africa. Says Justin, and that is the other side of things. If they are heavily ahead, do they go with a slightly weaker side, chuck them into Cape Down and see whether or not they can pull off the upset? I honestly feel like that is a tactic that they've used throughout the last maybe two years. At the moment, Leinster, and any time they've done that, when it comes to the playoff games, they have lost to South African sides. So they have to make sure that if they're going to send a side to South Africa, it is competitive. It does have a lot of their stars in it because that may be a great testing point and a great prelim to what we see maybe in the playoff games. Of course, Leinster, at the moment, with how many points they sit on, they are through to the quarterfinals, theoretically. The big question mark are a few of these sides that are sitting around that 34 points. Of course, the Lions being defeated by Ospreys, which now brings them up to 35. So they get that little bit more of a leapfrog. Edinburgh unable to win themselves the game up against the Sharks. The Sharks only receiving four points for that game, though, as they forever try and find their way towards that top eight. But looking through at the starting lineups again, ladies and gentlemen, for anyone who hasn't seen them, for the Stormers, it will be Brock Harris, Joseph Dweber, and Nedling Foshier as the front row. Selman Mora alongside Ruben van Heeren in the locking duo. And then Willy Engelbrecht, Hachiva Diamani at seven. I have to say, I think he's scoring a try. In this game, he just looks so dangerous in open space. Definitely when he starts the game. He doesn't quite have that same impact when he's off the bench. Seems to be when he gets into his craft early and when he gets those starting minutes, that is when we see him really start to shine. And Ivan Ruiz, he's the same. When you give him a start, when you give him the ball early, he's going to make meters, he's going to break tackles, and he's going to create chances for the Stormers side. Their back line, though, Paul DeVette, Marnie Libok, Damien Valimza, Dan Duplessy, Lillian Zas, Hudsonberg, and what a Kalant. Doesn't get much better than that, and they will be stacked from head to toe in this contest. They come in as heavy favourites, and when you look through at this lineup, you can understand exactly why. And they'll be wanting to win this one by 20 plus. And I honestly feel 
If Ulster aren't able to compete early, the Stormers have got the chance of being able to do that. Now, I don't normally give big predictions like that because normally I'm very wrong. I'm either going to be able to jinx them here and help them out towards that, or it's going to go the opposite way and maybe Ulster can keep it close and take this game down to the wire. And in their front row, of course, they have got Stephen Kitsoff. So the Kitsoff versus Malharba combination could take place. Tom O'Toole and Rob Hearing also and at that front row, then Sheridan, he is going to be out there alongside Kieran Treadwell, Matty Rea, McCann and Timoney. So similar to what we saw last week with the change at number six, Cooney and Doak will be the 19 combo. I know Billy Burns for this matchup. McClowski returns from the Six Nations, Hume at 13, and then McElroy, Balakoon and Michael Lowry as the back three. You go the Stormers, says Carmen, and Stormers should take this. I know little of Ulster. Says Stefan, and also hi all in Hamish, says Robert there, Marina Hamish, and all the lovely uh, Kiwi lads far now. And Stormers need four tries going with 28 points to 12. And the Storm is says by standard, or by stander, I should say. But I will mention the thing that slightly, I guess, disappointed me about that Sharks game when they played. They weren't aggressive enough. They didn't chase the bonus point. The Storm aside, I can guarantee you right now, Yes, they want to get themselves the victory, but if they feel that they can win this game by scoring four tries, getting those on the board, they will go for it. They will kick to the corner, they will look for scrums five metres out from the line, and they will try and get that bonus point under their belt. At this stage of the competition, every single point is completely crucial for where you do finish in that top eight. So I would like to think we're going to see quite a bit of attack from the Stormers. Same with Ulster. If they feel that they are getting their momentum early on in this game, I don't doubt that they will start kicking it for the corner. And they will try and rally up a few points of their own and put the South African side under pressure. And pretty hot in Cape Town tonight, says Justin. So I believe we will have the water breaks after the 20 minutes as well as after the 60 minutes in this contest. Now, I will actually mention we did miss that game between Lions and Ospreys. And I don't know whether or not I have some sort of telepathy, but fun fact, the coverage cut out on New Zealand TV halfway through that game, and there was no way of watching the second half. So it's probably lucky we didn't cover that game, and I'm hoping that that is not going to happen for this one, but I did actually end up popping in and watching on the Rugby Gurus live stream. A few of you guys will know him, of course. He was the first collaboration on the Kiwi Lads channel, and we will, of course, have to do something very soon as well. But this game... Just around the corner from getting underway. Three minutes from the kickoff. And there are still more games of the URC that are taking place of this round. We get to see the Glasgow Warriors in action a bit later on tonight. They're going head to head, I believe, with the Scarlets. And then alongside that, we are going to get to see the game between Munster and Cardiff, I believe. So they find themselves going head to head with. Once again, looking through at the benches, though, the impact players and the ones that could make a big difference. Now, the Stormers have gone with that 6-2 split with the extra enforcement in that loose ball trio of Ben Jason Dixon alongside Marcel Tennyson. They have still got some power off the bench in the backs with Ben Loder and also that speed of Herschel Yankees to replace Paul DeVette in the later stages of the game. And we cannot look past that number 18 for the Stormers, Franz Malharba, to come off the bench late and add some real impact. But for us, they've got Tom Stewart, and number 16 alongside that, Marcus Rea. They've just mentioned it is 33 degrees Celsius. Now, that is pretty warm. And that is going to be extremely fatiguing. You have to wonder, though, are South Africa more accustomed to these conditions or are Ulster? And you'd have to say, heavily favours the Stormers for this game. Because Ulster will not be used to this temperature. The only time that they'll probably get close to this temperature is while they have been in South Africa for this two-leg series. And Cape Town's still hot. And it's a nice weather to play rugby. C.S. William Moses, and fingers crossed, doesn't cut out on us. Especially Stormers game. Really important one to watch. C.S. Blues Nate there as well. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like it's a great way to close out in terms of our weekend streaming. We have done four Super Rugby games back-to-back. -back. We've done two other games of the URC. I haven't slept for about 24 hours and my eyes are definitely showing it. But we're hopefully going to be able to put sentences together all the way through this live stream and get to enjoy every second of this URC action. I just got up from my nap high blues, says Robert Vale. 
Anna there as well, but it looks like Tom O'Toole will be making his way out onto the field all by himself to bring up his celebratory, I think that's his 50th cap, but it might even be the 100th for Tom O'Toole here. The Adios Shonic, yeah, it's his 100th for Ulster Rugby. So a big occasion for him. He's going to be playing in Cape Town, of course. I guess you could say in some regards, enemy territory needs a big performance away from home here. And this is the shack. Uh, this is how we at caps. I peel, flex my steel, says Nas Williams. I have no idea what that means. I think that's from like a song or something. But Stephen Kitsov has also made his way out onto the field. Here we go, Stormers. Here we go. Is the chant that is going around, but Diamani makes his way out onto the field. Of course, he is bringing up his own milestone, and the crowd are getting behind him. Now, this is interesting because Stephen Kitsoff, of course, it's Stormers player. He is on his own stomping ground, and he's playing for the opposition this time. He's wearing a white kit rather than that classic blue. So, of course, any penalties that he wins, he's probably going to get slight. I don't think there'll be much booing. There'll be a few who boo him, but I think overall they'll just show appreciation because at the end of the day, it's Stephen Kitsoff. He's a World Cup winner for the South Africans two times in a row. they got to show him some love. And we appreciate you. Love the stream, says Jane. Thank you very much, mate. Usually appreciate it. The Storm is 51 to the 17 of Ulster is the prediction there from Jimbo. But do let me know your score predictions, ladies and gentlemen, anyone who hasn't already. And also, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button it is greatly appreciated you all being here for this contest it's gonna be an entertaining game and i feel like it's a hard one to predict sam grove white is going to be the referee in charge of this now i think this is the first game that we have actually covered with sam grove white as the main referee and stormers against the stormers says julia moses indeed hamish thank you for your commentaries and coleman at 11 months and 28 days says robert there also you're very close to your membership going to 12 months, I believe, if I'm correct. But now Ulster, they will be kicking this one off from left to right, or in fact, right to left, to get us underway in a hot Cape Town Stadium. It's going to feel like a pressure cooker out there. And the question is, can Ulster handle the heat, or will the Stormers ignite that fire in Cape Town and get themselves another victory? It has kicked off long. Down towards the 22 and nicely claimed on the high ball already taken by Lelian Zas. And Evan Ruiz throws himself at the line and you know he's going to every time you give him the ball. It's exactly what you want from a big number eight. It looks like he's lost the ball here though and Ulster have managed to get themselves the turnover. Nokia, I think that was Ruben van Heeren goes over the middle of the breakdown but Ulster get that ball early. Give themselves the chance. Up against the Stormers rush defence. Shut down early was Doak. Now Cooney is across in the midfield. And this is some physical tackles already on the board. 34 points to 17, says Denise, in favour of the Stormers. So I don't think I've seen a single person back Ulster to win this game at this point. And that might be for decent reason, although they are starting this match well. Passing on the inside, Robert Balakoon goes through. Moving to 15 metres from the line. Chance again for Ulster. Try and put a couple phases together. And build towards that try line. Big run from Matty Rea. He gets driven backwards. Again, big shots coming in from Joseph Dweber and Diamani, But they both actually missed the tackle there. Doesn't cost them too many metres. Ulster still... In position here. They're up to eight phases in a row. Steven gets off. His first touch. I was just listening for the crowd reaction. There's a bit of a mixed reaction for that man. So the dummy as if he was going wide there. Stuart McClowski. Ulster have no form. Can't back them. Says Jimbo. Although some teams that don't have form all of a sudden turn it on. I mean we saw that for the Crusaders in Super Rugby. We saw that for the Sharks in the game last week up against Edinburgh. That is a loose ball, though, for Ulster. And it's cleaned up by Dan Duplessis. Now will kick it down the field. Slap back. And it's still on the side of the away team. Cleaned up by was a McElroy. And also we have got there. Uh, got me that one. Uh, the Love Shacks. Says Blues Nate. 40 metres out. Cooney going across at the moment. We haven't actually got any commentary for myself here in New Zealand. Although we don't normally hear too much anyway, it's normally only the TMO that we are able to hear. Driving tackle made on Nathan Doak. It's got pressure early on from the Stormers. 
the way that they have been able to shut down this Ulster attack, and they have to do that for the full 80 minutes. That's going to be kicked downfield. It was touched by a Stormers defender. Now, I don't think it was on purpose. Actually ended up kind of slapping him in the back of the shoulder, I believe it was. Nice to be back. Another epic Kiwi lads says, was there from Arthur and also not 5,000 miles from home. They don't, says a Jimbo. Lowry went for the kick and I think it just caught the arm of Paul DeVette. That means that Ulster have got themselves the line out. Who you got scoring the first try, says Luke. Either Diamani or Ivan Ruiz, so I would say. Have the best chance, although... To be fair, if we were going to see a try from Ulster to start us off, I think it would be out on the wing, probably Robert Balakoon, at a guess. They are currently 25 metres out from the line here, Ulster. Ball is in the hands of Rob Hearing at the back. Slowly making one or two metres, but it's not going to be enough for them to not get told to use it. Ball's gone out the back line. Another advantage this time for a knock on. Goes out to Michael Lowry in open space. Tries to back himself to go on the outside. Round money, Libok, as well as what a Kalant. Now Doak goes for the kicker behind. The advantage was over. Cleaned up by Halant. Goes across the hands of Hudsonburg. Will fire it down the middle of the field. In fact, he's fired it towards the sideline. Looking for the 50 22. Alston now back inside of their 22. And the clearing kick going downfield. And that is a fantastic kick from Ulster. There was James Hume who sent the slipper through that one. And Stormers says Arthur Harrison. In terms of who will be able to score the first try. But yeah, I have a good feeling about the loose forward trio for the Stormers. Because more than likely they would have been told to go out there on the field and just empty the gas tank. Because they have got Marcel Tennyson. And they have also got the option off the bench of Ben Jason Dixon. So they might as well just throw absolute caution to the wind, put a big performance in, and get their side off to a great start. And that is a loose line out from Joseph Dweber, which now lets Rob Hearing clean that up for Ulster. Now back in position once more. Now Nathan Doak, a little bit hesitant with that pass as the Storm has rushed up to shut down that quick attacking back line of Ulster. I live in Ulster, not trying to diss them, but the Stormers are, are on the top. Now Robert Balakoon, Look for the inside ball. Does get grubbed forward. It's going to be another advantage over. And now Warwick Lant. Now kicks it down the field. Nicely taken inside of Ulster territory here. Thought about the 50-22, but instead we'll run this ball forward. Good hands from Stuart McClowski. Walking the tightrope near the touchline. Tackled by his opposite number, Damian Valimza. What's the attendance look like? It looks not too bad. Well, this contest, from what I've seen, of course, with the hot temperatures, that can sometimes either draw in a bigger crowd or, I guess, make a few players or a few supporters not go to the game. But from the wide shot that I saw before, it did look like there were a few people in attendance for this game. That one's going to be kicked down foul. Money Lebok. I think he called for the mark, or at least tried to, but he did land outside of the 22. So it is going to be play on. Now, Nilling Fushie hits the ball up for the Stormers. Steven Kitsoff wrestled backwards. By, I think that was Salman Mora, who has decided to just lie on him at the moment to keep him out of that breakdown. Mani Libok going for the up and under cross field. Close to that touchline. Great hands on that one from Dan Duplessis. Now, what a calant on the 22. Mani Libok gets told to send it downfield again. Straight down the middle of the park. And Alston now have got the position on the halfway line. Cooney sends it high. This one will be outside of the 22. But what a Kalant has been able to clean it up nicely. Now Mani Libok goes across to Hudsonburg. He's already shown that he's got a long boot in this game earlier on. Looks like a bit of an ugly landing for him as well. Already having strapping on that knee. Mani Libok, the bounce pass does not work out. What a Kalant has to go back to clean it up. And they are now only five metres out from their line. Gets a wide to Dan Duplessis. Now... To the halfway line. A lot of players for the Stormers getting warned that they were going to be offside. Michael Lowry runs it forward here. We have not had a single stoppage in this one. Rob Balakoon, or at least not in the last three minutes or so. All of the penalty advantage, or at least the knock-on advantages, have been over. Going to the left-hand side here. Again for Ulster. Nathan Doak, flat ball. Straight through the middle. And Ulster make it look too easy. And they score the first try of the match. That is Nick Timoney, who has carved his way through to the fence. 
And I don't think many people expected that. The crowd are almost in a stunned silence at the moment, but early try score for Nick Timoney. That gap was huge. And I don't know who was supposed to fill it, but someone's probably going to get in trouble for the Stormers there for the way that they did defend that one. We're about to see the replay. And Nathan Doak just straight through. Yeah, that's a huge gap between Joseph Dweber and Diamani. And their last point says Evan Oliver. It could be. You never know, but they've certainly started this match with a hiss and a roar. We haven't really seen the Stormers on attack inside of Ulster's half, but it is only a matter of time before we get to see the runner-ups of last year and also the defending champions of the year prior get some momentum in their favour. If I mention anyone who is new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are back with plenty more of the URC. The Champions Cup next week we are covering. Where I will be the Stormers taking on La Rochelle. And then also the Bulls taking on Lyon. We are covering both of those games. This one's going to be lined up by Ulster though. Only a few metres out. Hamish, is your eye feeling better? It is not. No, it's extremely bloodshot. And it's going to look pretty brutal tomorrow, I think. But that is okay because... We've done an all-nighter. We've covered, this is our eighth live stream in the last little while, I believe. Or it might be a seventh, seventh or eighth. One of those two might be eighth, actually. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And the eyes are going to, they'll heal. <laughs> but out on the halfway line, the Stormers will be able to kick this one off. And this will get the ball deep into Ulster territory. At the moment, the kicking battle has gone the way of Ulster. Normally, when you kick that ball to the back three, Hang on, there's a replacement already. Mo Michael Lowry has gone off for more here. I don't know whether that's a head, head injury assessment. That kick from Marnie Libok has almost gone backwards off the kickoff. So they will now have the scrum option on the halfway line for Ulster. And we will get to see Stephen Kitts off in action at scrum time in Cape Town. Now, the last time we probably saw that was when he was playing for the Stormers. Now, playing for Ulster in this contest at the like button. Good people. See his boy standing here. Anyone who hasn't already, be sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel. We've also got the Sevens next weekend. The Hong Kong Sevens. Seeing the Blitz Box in action. Storm has won five scrum penalties against Edinburgh. They have won the most scrum penalties in the URC so far this season with 39. As the statistic, statistic I should say, that has just popped up onto the screen. So... That means that they got a pretty decent chance of being able to win themselves an early penalty here at scrum time. See whether or not will be effective. Brock Harris got his hands full. Going here to here with Tom O'Toole in his 100th game for Ulster. Then you've got Stephen Kitsoff versus Nettling for Shear. Cooney on the halfway line. Feeds the ball in for Ulster. Only sitting 7-0 in this contest. Stormers came in as heavy favourites. I believe they will still be favourites, even with that early try of this Ulster side. But losing Michael Lowry, that'll be a big hit. Nice ball on the inside. Knocked back by Hudsonberg. So the ball is still going to be alive. And this time the Stormers are in position. The balls were good in the first half, but the Stormers are going one up in the second half. That's the difference, says John. And as I go, the Stormers go, says Julian. They have been told to use it, so Paul DeVette will roll this ball back. It's going to be kicking this one high into the Cape Town night sky. Jason, after this is Hudsonberg. He's already covered a lot of metres throughout this game, whether that is defending or attacking. He's also put a decent boot downfield when it was needed earlier on. Cooney now passes across to Stephen Kitsoff. Runs straight at Ruben van Heeren. Now Cooney will roll this one back. Being told to use it. Let's get it high once more. Quite a kicking orientated game between these two sides early on. Just testing out what is happening with their opposition. And that is actually going to be a knock on from Marnie Libok. As he went to ground there, he did knock the ball on. Bit of a rare mistake from him. It means that Ulster have got themselves another scrum feed here. So I do have a question, ladies and gentlemen. For anyone who is watching in South Africa... Do you guys currently have commentary out of curiosity? Because us in New Zealand, at the moment, we're watching it on TVNZ Plus here. They do not have the commentary. We actually only can hear the referee, which is kind of cool in a way. Like, I like the commentary, don't get me wrong, but hearing what the referee's saying at all stages of the game kind of gives you a different feel of the game and also a different perspective of what's happening out there on the field. I have the Sharks win. 
says William Moses. They did get themselves the win, although they did not get themselves the bonus point, which I was a bit disappointed about. I felt like they had enough opportunities to be able to increase that lead and take a risk by going for the seven rather than the three. But in the end, they just weren't willing to, and they only received the four points rather than the five. And the most recent South African side in action was the Lions. They were up against the Ospreys. They were defeated. They made a decent comeback in that contest. It was just too little, too late. And the Ospreys are able to extend that lead with a last minute try. Nice short pop pass, but it's going to be dropped. Amani Lubok kicks that one downfield. Going to be an awkward one to line up there for Ulster. Almost a 50-22 for Marnie Libok. Miklowski did not look comfortable at all kicking that ball. You can tell that normally they either let the 10 or the man maybe at 15 do the kicking. As Miklowski he was shuffling to his side to try and get that kick. And in the end, it's going to be about 38 metres out. And the Stormers now have got themselves this attacking chance. Oh, we've got commentary now. On the coverage, Joseph Dweber, ready to throw this one in. He is just saying maybe that the gap is being closed a little bit by Ulster. Now needs to get this line out straight. His last one was actually overthrown, went over the top. But Ruben van Jeren climbing that one very nicely for the Stormers. Big criticism in the press today about Luke McGrath tackle on a rinser. Uh, seems only the officials thought it wasn't red, says Jimbo. And no commentary here in Cape Town, only ref Mike. Says by a standard, so maybe it will kick in. Ah, oh, it's back on now. Says by a standard, but that one hasn't come out for the rolling mall of the Stormers, which once again will give possession to Ulster and the opportunity to put the scrum feed in. I'm back uh, from the something. Says Kristen Nebel, welcome back. Hope you are doing well still. 14 and a half minutes in. That was brilliant work from Kieran Treadwell. Uh, yeah, it's back here in Ireland as well. Says a Richard there, but currently possession... Is 71% in favour of Ulster. Territory is 88%. So while they've got this much ball. And while it is this much in their favour. They do need to make the most of it. Because I have a big feeling. That if they can't capitalise on the amount of possession that they've had here. And the amount of chances that they've had. There is a big chance that in the second half of the Stormers. Or even in the second half of this first half. Second 20 minutes. That the Stormers may be able to slowly fire their way back into this game. Yeah, it's back here in Ireland as well. Says a Richard. Hori there. Now I'm about to be fed into the scrum. Were you watching it, Richie? Says a Jimbo. Now Jeremy Cooney. Sorry, John Cooney, I should say. To uh, put this ball in. Looks like a relatively solid scrum from both of these sides. Popping off the back, Nick Timoney. Goes across to Stuart Mikulowski. Tries to use his power. Look for the offload once again though. Rushing it. There for Ulster. And it's opened up the opportunity on the outside. For the Stormers. To be able to go for the counter attack. That looks very loose. Paul DeVette has managed to clean it up. But Robert Balakoon gets over it. They'll go back for the original scrum. And time for the Stormers to catch a uh, wake up. See Stefan. I just said about how Stephen Kitts off. It's definitely not a friendly game out there at the moment. Ulster have come to win. And the Stormers, they need to make the most of this position now inside of Ulster's half. They can get it back to 7-all. And I do still have a strong feeling that we're going to see either Diamani or Ivan Ruiz score the first try for the Stormers. I wouldn't mind seeing a back line. You know, Lilligan Zassi has been getting quite a few tries as of late. Same with Hudson Berg. They were both phenomenal in that game up against Edinburgh. And Ulster will hammer them. Says a Vincent, or Vincent, sorry. And uh, there as well. A few nervous looking coaches in that Stormers coaching box here. They won't be happy with the way that they have started this game. A lack of position, a lack of territory. But they do still have time to come back into it. All about to be fed in by Paul DeVert. Stephen Kitsoff going head dead with Nedeling for sheer again. That one's gone in. It's relatively stable. In fact, now it's starting to wheel around a little bit. Too much movement, says the ref. Do you fancy winning this, says Vincent? I mean, Stormers came in as heavy favourites. And I honestly do feel like once they get a bit more position and a bit more territory, they have got a pretty good chance of coming back in this contest. I know that that's probably not what you want to hear, seeing as you did say that Ulster will hammer them. 
But I think that the heat playing in 33 degree temperature is just going to sap the energy of Ulster as this match wears on. 6-2 split for Stormers off the bench as well. With uh, I believe they've got Ben Jason Dixon as well as Marcel Tennyson. They've got Ben Loder off the bench in the back line. I think that they have definitely got the more notable bench. And I think that that is going to help them in the later stages of this game. But Ulster have started this match extremely well. And if they continue at this rate, they could also find themselves success here. That was on the far side. Stephen Kitsoff and Nidaling Fosher both losing their footing. A referee telling them to both just try and go a little bit higher. Uh, how can you watch this in New Zealand? If you are in New Zealand, you can watch it on TVNZ+. Plus. So all you need is an email address. And if you've got an email all signed up to TVNZ+, Plus, it's, it's all for free. Any game involving a South African side does get shown on there. And Storm is 24, Ulster 47, think so. I'll well, tell you what, that's a big score. But who knows? I think it is going to be a high-scoring one between the two sides. Even though this first 20 minutes have almost passed, We've only seen the one try. I think that both sides have had far too many handling errors early on here. That's gone down once again, and the Stormers have got themselves the penalty this time. The league's going out from underneath. Stephen Kitsoff. Now, do the Stormers take on the three points while they are straight out in front of the post from about 38 metres out, or do they kick for the corner and look to be aggressive here? I believe they are looking towards the corner. Or are they? No, they are going for the post here. Marnie Libok. Says they will go for the early three to bring them back within the seven. Stephen Kitsoff. Hey, I needling for sure. Now, Kitsoff was angling in a little bit there. So that is probably what ended up with him getting penalised as well. Front row angling. Money Libok, he's got 33 seconds remaining of his penalty count. And by the time he takes this kick, will more than likely be sitting at 20 minutes through this game. And the Storm is... But find themselves only down by the four points. I think they'll be more than happy with that at this current stage with the amount of points or the amount of position that they have had points, says Julian. Now Mani Libok line up this kick. And he's Mr. Mani Libok. Gone away to the side. And that will keep the score at seven points to nil in favour of Ulster. Not exactly the way he wanted to strike that first one. Just a little bit of right to left off the boot. Did end up curving around that post. Now the 22 drop out here for Ulster again. Of course, anyone wondering about Ulster and what is up for them next week? They are actually a part of the Challenge Cup rather than the Champions Cup. They did finish, or finish, sorry, bottom of their group, which meant that they did get demoted from the Champions Cup down to the Challenge Cup in which they do continue playing, but just as the round of 16 for that competition kicked him behind, Lillian's ass chases after it. It's nicely controlled by Ulster. He had a foot in touch. And they do actually take that one quickly. Dan Duplessis saw the passing option. Now it goes to Damien Belimza. Had a lot of try assists last week. Got himself the man of the match, but never crossed the try line himself. Maybe this week. We will get to see the difference. Another penalty goes the way of the Stormers. Looks like Damian Willems is actually holding his face here. And this is going to be uh, Champions Cup winners, says Vincent. And also uh, Stormers 39, Ulster 10. And Naomi uh, Polis from Mamri come on the Stormers, says Naomi there. Looks like they are just giving Willems a little bit of medical attention here. It might have been a boot that ended up clipping his head. Now it looks like Marnie Libok. What are they going to decide here? So he drops his head. And then, oh, it's actually, I think it's Johan Nidalin Fusher, his teammate, who has actually come in and connected. Damien Valimza looks straight to the referee for the penalty, but little does he know, it was actually his prop that ended up connecting with his chin. Uh, do you have the tribe app? I certainly do. It's a very handy app when it comes to being able to work out exactly what is happening in the world of sport. Okay, are they going upstairs for this? It wasn't it? No, I... Okay, they are calling for the shot. I was about to say, surely my eyes did not deceive me there, but it was actually his own player who made connection with Damien Valimza's head. But Marnie Libok, 
This kick is going to be a little bit further out than his last one. But he's still willing to back himself to get it over. This time from about 45 metres out rather than the 38. And the distance wasn't the issue with the last kick. It was just that accuracy going a little bit away to the left-hand side. This one for Marnie Lebok. You'd like to think he should be able to get this one over. I will mention anyone who is new to the channel, of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated. You all being here for this stream. We've got plenty more coming in the near future, including the Champions Cup next week where the Stormers will go head to head with La Rochelle and the Bulls, the other South African side in the Champions Cup still. They will be going head to head with Leon. Now, interestingly enough, the Stormers, oh, Marnie Libok's done the exact same thing. He has pulled it away to the left hand side once again. So that is now zero from two for Marnie Libok off of the kicking tee. Uh, but yeah, the Stormers, if they win up against La Rochelle, they have to go head to head with either Leinster or Leicester Tigers. Two very good sides. So, yeah, I might be a little bit of a, I guess you could say, a prelim of what could happen later on in the URC competition. We have got the donation from Jimbo in terms of the five gifted memberships. Thank you very much. Oh, that's a tackle in the air. I think that was from David McCann. Possibly could have been a penalty. Now kicked him behind. Robert Balakoon cleans it up. For Ulster, oh, as he let the kick for them. He was awful for South Africa in the World Cup as well. He's a brutal kicker. See, as Vincent, although, like, to be fair, for Marty Libok, his kicking actually drastically improved as that World Cup went on. And he kicked a few very important kicks in the later stages of contests as well. All oh, a bit of back and forth there between Salman Ro uh, Mora as well as Harry Sheridan. And this must, or well, they must shift the pause for Libok. See, as Ben... At least a one last night with only 12 men on the pitch, says Jimbo. Okay, the TMO does a job. I trust him, says the referee to Salman Mora, as if to say, stop talking to me about certain penalties. The TMO will see it if it happens. But now Doak does put it in touch. To be fair, though, Dan Duplessis was off the ground and did get hit. So... It should have been a penalty for taking him out in the air. But it was ruled as otherwise. But now, our Wada Kalant going to kick every ball again, it seems, says Justin. And he's still a very confusing player, some would say, for Wada Kalant. You never know whether or not he's going to give you a 10 out of 10, which every once in a while he does, and it is absolutely fantastic to watch. And then other times he gives you about a 3 out of 10. There doesn't seem to be that in-between for Wada Kalant currently. And I think that's the consistency that the Stormers are trying to find at 15. And whether or not that means that Valimza has to transfer back there, whether they go to Clayton Blomakis as another option. He hasn't really had too much game time. I wonder if he has got some sort of injury at the moment that has left him out or whether he's just down the picking order in terms of the selection flat run from James Hume. Run backwards by Ruben van Heeren. Now kits off. Big shot coming in there. From the Stormers defence. Willie Engelrick wrestling with one of the Ulster players. Mikulowski short ball there. Good hands from Kieran Twipwell. Pass out the back door from Rob Bellacoon. Now cutting up the middle. The man who has already scored one try. Nick Timoney. Who do you think is the best 10 right now in the world? Says Vincent. Depends on what type of 10 that you are looking for I would argue. But like in terms of like coming in clutch. I mean you got to look at that last World Cup and there's a certain name. That does pop up there. A man who was injured at the start. And who was then brought in as injury cover. And managed to come back and help South Africa win the whole thing. Now Balakoon Trying to roll the right way. It's going to be the penalty advantage for Brock Harris. Not rolling away. Cut out pass. It did go forward. They've said. But they'll go back for the original penalty. Now I'll stay have the opportunity to get this one over. Make it a 10 point lead. Or they can go for the corner. And try and extend their lead to even more than just the 10. The big question mark that they have to ask themselves is how many points is enough to beat the Stormers side? And you're honestly looking normally in the 20s or the late 20s to the early 30s at least. But Brock Harris, the man who did get penalised for not being able to roll out of that breakdown. Just looking through at the Stormers' last five games. And what they have been able to do out there on the field in terms of their results. And the B 
biggest loss that they had in the last five games, and the only loss that they've had was actually up against the Bulls. 40 points to 22. Does look like Ulster are willing to go for the three points here, though, rather than kicking for the corner. There's the safe points on offer. And all is poor. I like McKenzie. Says Outlaw. Uh, how do you feel about the Drew smash the force? It was an interesting game. One of the weirdest games we have seen. Oh, it hits the post and comes back out. So that is going to be a missed kick for Ulster as well. Clearing kick from Dan Duplis. He does well. But both sides have already missed three kicks combined in this matchup. Straight out in front of the post, like I've said, it's the perfect night for goal kicking. But it's almost too perfect in a way. These sides aren't able to capitalise. And even New Orleans, Hot Hamish says, Roof, welcome in, Roof. Our line out throw, Rob Hearing slaps it away to Ulster. Balakoon goes across to the midfield. McClowski gets it away to Matthew Ray. Oh, skip pass. Very nicely done. I'll stay have space. McElroy kicks it in behind. 23 style to pull out. That's almost a 50-22. And they think it is. They're just going to be checking this to see whether or not it was a successful 50-22 for McElroy. And it is. So Ulster will have themselves to line out from only 10 metres out from the Stormers line. At the moment, the win predictor actually has Ulster as 58% likely to win this game. Now that is actually massive compared to the TAB odds at the moment, which still has the Stormers as a favourite. We have ha hardly seen a Stormers attack here. Why is Austin not tiring? Oh, it's happening like I thought. They would be gas, says Vincent. Although to be fair, they've been able to play this game at their tempo currently. And the Stormers have not had a huge amount of attack. And any time they start to get a few more running metres under their belt, that is normally when an opposition gets fatigued, but at the moment, like, they haven't had to make hardly any tackles, and also, they haven't had to really play from inside of their own half, so they haven't had to run back to try and cover that defence. Uh, whereas the box, stilettos and fishnets, I hope he's got his spectacles on tonight, says Roof. And I was like, Roof, and great to see some points on the board. It's Ulster and Rambo Lebok, says Paul Terry. Apparently 29 minutes through. It's going to be the scrum feed this time in favour of okay joseph dweber i think was asking for a penalty but then the referee pretty much said to him you're lucky that i didn't give it against you as not straight i think referees just said i'm the referee you're not to joseph dweber are you okay there good one roof says paul terry have you got any news on cam Royga? last i heard it was a dislocated knee but other than that i am completely in the dark hopefully we find out something in the near future but i'd assume that if it is anything more serious they will go for x-rays similar to what we saw for eben Etzebeth up against the edinburgh side just before he is saying that he's not sure of his injury extent has to go for x-rays to see exactly what it is that he has injured and the box kicking in consistency going to cost him Pollard waiting in the wings for the box says stefan and I was like, how was that Crusaders winning the Hurricanes, blowing it hard? Says Ruth. And some good performances from certain sides in Super Rugby. Same with this URC round. We saw a brilliant performance from Leinster in their game up against the Bulls. Definitely in that second half. But it's going to be very interesting to see the rounds as they progress. Of course, next round we do not have any URC. The weekend after we do not have any URC either. But this next one coming up seven days time is when... They have the Champions Cup. They have to switch on, says Irvin. Yeah. They need to find some sort of, I guess, not so much just dominance in this game, but they just need to find some sort of position, some sort of territory. They have got themselves the penalty at scrum time. So that will help them out a little bit. Looks like Stephen Kitsoff is not happy about that penalty. I think he has been penalised about twice already in the early stages. How are you there? Enjoying your day? I'm having a vodka and lemon. Says Ruth. Now Marnie Libok. This one needs to find touch. I just have a bad feeling that he's not going to put it out. Does he look for extra distance or does he make sure? Make sure it goes out. Good call from Marnie Libok. They will be about 40 metres out from their own line here. Now as bad as it seems, 
in terms of the lack of position here for the Stormers, they are still only down by seven. If they score before the end of this first half, they're back in the contest. And that is a high possibility. They've still got nine minutes remaining. They can break that line, get it out to Lillian Zas, get Valimza involved in that midfield. The passing was a little bit rough and went behind Ivan Ruiz. Now Mani Libok has to go across to Ruben van Heeren. Uh, it's always relaxing. Looking at Hamish's great smile and hearing his smooth commentary. Says a roof and also cold beer for me, roof. Says a Jimbo is going to be put high from. Paul De Vitt again. Not playing cleanly. Going to be knocked on. In fact, no, they've said it's gone backwards from Ulster. So it is going to be play on in this matchup. And Bulls will beat Leon at home. Says Outlaw. And yeah, if they manage to win their game, I believe they go head to head with either. Oh, I'm trying to remember who it is. It's another French side, I believe. No, it's Northampton or Munster that they would end up facing. And then if they win that game, I believe they will go head to head with the Stormers in the semi finals. Great run forward for Ulster there. James Hume looking for that next pass, but wasn't quite able to link up with his teammates. Rush defense from Evan Ruiz to try and stop that next pass. Now Doak, Diamani rushes up, but it's leaving gaps in behind here at the moment for the Stormers' back line. Doak kicks that one downfield and does keep it in the field. of play off the bounce. Sits up nicely for Lillian Zas. He's inside of his 22. That is a fantastic kick from him. I asked you this last night. Are you going to stream the Waz game? Says Kristen, I believe the comment there was that I would try my best when we have got the spare time, but sadly we won't be able to consistently do every single one of their games due to the overlaps that it has with Super Rugby. And come on, someone score a great try. Says Ruth, and the Stormers must score now. Says Julian Moses. Shark suddenly remembered their teeth. Says Ruth. Yeah, great driving run from James Hume to initially get that line break going. Balakoon gets the inside ball. From Doak. Now Cooney. Pop pass up from Tom O'Toole. Great face play here from Ulster. They have dominated, or, sorry, dominated the positions. That's a, such a poor game. Says Vincent. Only in regards to the Stormers. I think that Ulster overall have been pretty strong throughout this first half. Sounds as pretty uh, mediocre game so far. Says Stefan. And you must be tired. Says Kristen. We have been up for about 24 hours at the moment. And this is our... About seventh live stream within that 24-hour period. And bet who the Sharks are we're on the field this time, says Ruth. But yeah, like, first half, at the moment, I would say that Ulster will be relatively happy with what they've been able to do. Stormers, they will be, to say it nicely, utterly disappointed with how this first half has gone. But they will also know that they are only down by seven, and a try here would get them back to an even playing field going into their second half of the match. But time is wearing on. And to be honest, the Stormers haven't really looked like scoring yet, which is very unlike them. They normally score multiple tries throughout a first half and normally are close to chasing that bonus point. What is going to be your next live stream? I believe it is going to be on Friday next week for Super Rugby and also the Sevens taking place in Hong Kong. I think those are the next two. We've also got the Champions Cup that we are covering since there is no URC. What's the plan for the Stormers here? Are they going to beat Ulster? That's not a certainty yet, says Roost. Uh, sorry, says Ruth. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that they definitely need to work on just taking their chances and not trying to rush it. At the end of the day, they've got a world-class side cross for them in Ulster, and they've got a world-class side on the field for them. So America fans are ridiculous. Ulster are playing well, says Johnny Byrne. Yeah, they're probably one of the best First task that they have had in the last little while here, Ulster. Like, in terms of their last maybe four or five games, they've got another scrum penalty. Evan Ruiz puts in a push out of frustration. Everything's going wrong at the moment for these Stormers here. Are you excited for the Box versus Ireland? I certainly am. We are going to be covering those games on the channel as well. And both coaches must be hoping or hopping mad with their player performances. I think Ulster won't be mad at all. Like, they, they haven't gone badly in this first half. And I honestly, like, I do think that in terms of the stats, when we look at them at half time, like, Ulsters will be very impressive. I think they've beaten quite a few defenders. They've had a few clean breaks. Stormers versus Ulster, says Simon. And Irish needs his beauty sleep. 
He's been going like the Terminator year, Paul. Mediocracy is a ruin of many. A player at this level, the Springboks want revenge, says Irvin. And there as well, it's Stephen Kitsoff and Johan Nidling for share. They're just going back and forth at the moment at scrum time. In terms of one will win a penalty, then the other wins one, then the other gets one back. And now it looks like Ulster are going to be lining up the three points here with Cooney. Sitting one from two today. Missed his last kick. Did end up hitting the post, but he has got the ability of kicking at the 46 metres that this one needs to travel. Does strike it well, although it's drifting. And it's missed away to the left-hand side. This just seems to be one of those days that neither kicker are going to be able to really cement themselves with a large percentage. It seems like it's a hard day for kicking, even though they said it's perfect kicking conditions, but both kickers have now missed two kicks. Cooney has managed to at least get that one over. We have to lose our uh, pool game to win the cup. Uh, even Uncle Rassi said so. Says Irvin, and I'm putting my five rand on Ulster to finish best here, says Ruth. And now 22 dropout for the Storm. There's still three minutes remaining in this half. Nicely cleaned up by McElroy. Stormers, they just need a big turnover on the halfway line. Maybe she must take care of your eyes. Lots of time on that screen. Says Arthur, yeah, I think I will need glasses very soon. In fact, I think I already do need glasses. As the eyesight is not the best. Although that's probably the least of my problems at the moment. That's going to be knocked on by Rob Balakoon. And we must be pumping both kickers struggling. I think that there's hardly any breeze. I think they said earlier on that it's 33 degrees Celsius and there's only like maybe 10 kilometers of wind. But like, yeah, it's just not quite happening for the kickers. Unfortunately, maybe they are waiting for the breeze to pick up and it just hasn't done so. And also we got the Madan on Friday. He lost it when the Crusaders scored the intercept try. Says Kristen. And Crusaders crushed the enemy. Good fight back from the death. And also, we have the Hamish, more like Heart Machine, says Joseph. We've seen six handling errors from Ulster. That is probably their most telling stat throughout this first half in terms of what they would have liked to do a lot better. Four handling errors from the Stormers. We've seen 62 carries from Ulster, 14 from the Stormers. So that tells you the possession stat is well and truly in one team's favour. Turn on brightness protection, uh, turns the screen dull or uh, orange. See, it's cool story, bro. Our ball's going to be fed in by Paul DeVette. Has been told to use it. Do you think we, as a Springbok team, can handle another World Cup? Your honest opinion? Says Irvin. I think that by the time we get to the next World Cup, they are going to be in a very good position. That's a four pass. Our wide to Hudson Berg, but it looks like they're going to say play on just for now. Gets the offload away. Flicks it back on the inside. And it's still going to be on the side of the Stormers. They need to make the most of this advantage. Like I mentioned, there could have been a four pass earlier on. And now that's going to be knocked down. And they've called it as a knock on against Ulster. This is now a great chance for the Stormers. 40 seconds remaining in the half and having a cracker and cheese snack. And because I do, uh, Rassi is cooking, says Irvin. Nice break of the line from Damian Valimza. Sending players back and forth all over the place. Then just ends up dropping it. And then there is that little knock on on the ground from Matthew Rea. That means that the Stormers have got a great chance. And like I said, they could go into halftime 7 all in this game for what has been, like, in the nicest way of saying it, one of their worst halves of the URC. I think we have seen them play all year. But... They're still in the game, and that is something that I guess just shows the class of the Stormers side, that even when they are struggling, they can still shut down a lot of attack, because when we look through at the stats at halftime, we will see the Ulster have made a few hundred metres or so in this game. They've had more than four times the carries, and this contest is getting very cool because, oh, now because it rains tomorrow, says Julian. Now scrum feed for the Stormers. They are on the 22 of Ulster. Paul Devet now feeding this ball in. It's gone in well. Looks like that front row is angling again, but the ball is there. Evan Ruiz goes off the back to Paul Devet, close to the touchline. Hudson Berg has to 
hurdle over the top of him to keep this ball in the field of play. Now the vet goes across to Ruben van Heeren. Oh, still looking for the turnover and the breakdown. They are told no. The vet goes across Marnie Libok. That is the knock on from the Stormers. And that will close out the first half. Seven points to nil in favour of the away side. How's your Easter weekend been, everyone? Sears a roof there. Just the one try being scored early on. Nick Timoney able to score it. And who would have thought that would be the only try that we had seen throughout this first half? And the Stormers need some points. And are you the uh, and the guy that asked you if he came to New Zealand? He would help you. Are you talking about doing it? Says Kristen, not really at this stage, no. And shocking says Jimbo. Yeah, low scoring first half. Between these two sides, we will quickly go like this and we will get some stats up to do with that first 14 minutes of play. But it certainly flew by. There weren't too many stoppages at all. It actually got done in 45 minutes. So one of the quickest halves that we have seen, but mainly because there were no replays or tries. There were no try stoppages really other than the one. And we had lots of rugby Easter bunnies on his Q-Lads channel. It says Ruth, we have seen 67% position in favour of Ulster. They have had seven clean breaks compared to the one of the Stormers. They have had 10 defenders beaten compared to the seven of the Stormers. And they have also had nine offloads compared to the one of the Stormers territory is 72%. Now, interestingly enough, the Stormers, this is the stat that has been saving them here. 88% tackle success rate. Compared to Ulster, who have only got a tackle success rate of 67%. Which just means if the Stormers can get more possession, they should have opportunities to break through and start scoring points on the board. But their defence has certainly been helping them. 72 tackles made, only missing the 10. You should do the NRL game on Monday. Says, Kristen, I believe that we are already booked in for Monday evening. Unfortunately, which I believe is when that Eels versus... Eels versus not the Cowboys. I can't remember who they're playing. Eels Tigers, I think it is, is going to be taking place. Bad game from the Bok. Says Outlaw. I mean, he did miss a couple kicks, but we've got to remember he was not the only player for the Stormers. He did struggle throughout that first half. We've seen a lot of drop ball, not just from the Bok, but also from that back line. Four pack. They have been a little bit shaky at times here. And Outlaw, they can play. Oh, they play as a team. Can't just play one guy. Says Irvin. And I was working there, okay, uh, but I had to go to work again. I need another three months holiday, but my French boss said no. Says a roof. Now, second half, I would say it's probably about 10 minutes away, somewhere around there. I saw Karma Peach was actually speaking in a different language earlier on, and I completely missed it, so I do apologise for that, Karma Peach. If you are still watching, we've got three penalties conceded against both of these sides. And in terms of the clean breaks, we've seen three from Rob Balakoon. We've seen four defenders beaten by Damien Valimza as the highest stat out of any player on the field. Most running meters goes to Rob Balakoon, followed by Hudson Berg. And then the most offloads goes to Rob Balakoon as well. We've seen Ruben van Heeren make a total of 10 tackles throughout that first half. The most tackles having to be made by Ulster, just the three of Rob Heeren. But Ruben van Heeren, this is an impressive stat. He has made the 10 tackles and he has not missed a single tackle in those 10. So it's those kind of performances from individuals that can help a side get back into a contest. And according to the TAB, ladies and gentlemen, fun fact, Ulster are still underdogs. In this contest, they still feel like the Stormers are going to be the side that walk away with the victory here. Watch the space. Lubbock will prevail. Says Arthur. And also, uh, Paul LeBuck sucks here. No creativity, says Ruth. And also, please send some snacks and Aero chocolate to Durban uh, for my uh, buy fast plane. I enjoy eating them, listening to Hamish's second half and Ulster 22 to 19, says Kristen. In the midfield, all fly half as the pivotal piece of the team like Dan Carter was. Uh, the general shocks, uh, cool shots, says Ruth. Although, yeah, I feel like there is more to blame than just Marnie Libok in this contest. Like, when you look through at the amount of handling errors they had throughout that first half, I think there were about five. I think maybe one of them was Marnie Libok. Agree, Ruth. Libok sucks and no reserve kicker on the bench, says Paul Terry. And also, I know I said the Stormers play as a team. 
as the blaming uh, Leboc is kind of not fair because they play together for the 80 minutes. And still always need a new fly half. Sears Outlaw. I think it's a bit early for that. Like, he's missed two kicks. And throughout the rest of the season, he's been one of the standout players for the Stormers. So, like, you're allowed an off day every once in a while. Of course, this is one of those games that have, he would have loved to be having a much better performance. But, you know, you look at someone like a Damien Valimza. He had a man of a match performance last week. We haven't really seen him do too much in this game. He's had a couple good runs, but the, the Stormers have only had about 10 runs throughout this game. How we have Gadea, how is the out half for Ulster? I assume that is the 10. This game, Nathan Doak, I think he has been a lot stronger in that number 10 jersey than some anticipated. And how do you think Scotland would do this year, says Christian Rush? Are we talking about the internationals or in terms of overall the like URC season? Because Edinburgh, I believe, is currently ranked sixth or so. Glasgow is sitting in that top four. And first storm is Dry Lebock cross kick, says Arthur Harrison. Well, that was not a great first half, says Grant. Yeah, definitely lackluster for the Stormers. Ulster, they did do what they needed to. They got their try on the board. They would have loved to be able to maybe cross the try line one or two more times or at least get a couple of those kicks over. We've got to remember Cooney also missed the two kicks for Ulster in that first 40. Looking through at the bench, JJ Kutsia, Lyons, and also Amal Haraba. Will be coming off the bench, Adre Smith and Ben Jason Dixon alongside Marcel Tennyson as the other Ford replacements. And Herschel Yankees and Ben Lode are the last two men off the bench for the Stormers. And the Ulster side, it is Tom Stewart, Andrew Warwick and also Wilson. Izzy Cormack at number 19 with Marcus Rear at 20. Then uh, Shanahan at 21. Flannery at number 22 and Moore at 23. I would still give the advantage to the Stormers bench in this game. And... Yeah, I think that it's going to be a tricky one to predict who is going to win this uh, contest from here. Ulster, you would think, have got the momentum, but I think that the Stormers near the end of that half started to put a little bit more together. Maybe not as much as they would have liked, but still, it looked like there were promising signs starting to form. And that one, uh, Matias is available. Says Paul Terry in halftime again. Need a rear full hammer, smashing it out of the park. Says Roof and Pollard too expensive. Sears Arthur, an international. Sears Chris. I mean, they already did not too badly overall in the Six Nations competition. And they should call Pollard up for the Stormers. And also, let's go the Stormers, says Marco. And the chat as well. When the block performs, nobody gives them credit. Yeah. And I said it all throughout the World Cup. But everyone always shut me down. Like, the amount of work that Marnie Libok does in terms of being able to create try scoring opportunities. Like, yes, he was missing kicks. But he was still getting three try assists a game. And the Stormers and also the Springboks, like they were scoring more tries than they almost ever had because of the attacking prowess and the attacking skill of Marnie Libok. When Pollard's on the field, don't get me wrong, the kicking is brilliant. It goes over nine times out of ten. But in terms of their attack, they don't score anywhere near as many tries when he's starting. So... When Marnie Libok was having fantastic games, a lot of people were going, oh, but he's missed a couple kicks. But at the same time, you know, he had scored 15 points from getting assists throughout that game. It's good on the counter kick. Says Irvin, a new predictions chat, 28 points to 21 in favour of the Stormers. Says Jimbo, I don't know whether we're going to get that higher scoring. And so I hooked on the Kiwi lads. USC rest week suck, although the Champions Cup is next week, Arthur. So it is going to be the Stormers taking on La Rochelle and the Bulls taking on Leon. So be sure to keep an eye out for those games. They actually do overlap, those two contests, but I'm hoping to find some way of being able to do both, having someone fill in for me for about 30 minutes of one while we do start. The other South African teams are all named after animals except for the Stormers. See, it's cool story, bro. That is true. Or at least the main ones in the URC, anyway. We have got there. Uh, Lebok gives me an Ulster. Uh, sorry, I mean Ulster, says Paul Theory. And Lebok is good with the counter kick. They should replace him with the reserve hooker, so that will be JJ Kutsia. And this one, when uh, we have got there as well. Hello, buddy. Uh, how's your side going, says Ruth. And do let me know, ladies and gentlemen. Second half prediction. We've had about a 10 minute break here, so probably only about two or three minutes off. The two sides making their way back out onto the field. 
who is winning this contest and also who's going to step up for the Stormers. I don't think we've seen enough of Evan Ruz. He is one of those players who normally can turn a game around for the Stormers. He's really shown no physicality in the breakdowns thus far. Dai Armani, he's been extremely quiet. Willie Engelbrecht, I forgot he was on the field. The only thing I saw him do was hold a forearm in the face of one of the Ulster players. Other than that, though, like nothing's really ringing a bell. Ruben van Heeren, I thought he was actually pretty good for the Stormers throughout that first half. And then, of course, scrum battles were a little bit 50-50 between Kitsoff and Nedeling Fouché. Both men getting a couple penalties along the way. If I do what you do, I would fall asleep, says Kristen. I thought I would have fallen asleep by now as well, to be honest. Like, we've been up for a very long time. And we also won't get to sleep for a very long time before we have to be up again as we are going to be filming a podcast. So, yeah, the, the weekends are brutal, but we get through them. Next weekend's going to be even more brutal. Like, I've been up for 24 hours today. Next weekend, I think we've got a stage where I have to be up for about 30 plus hours just to get everything done. And Lions, Cheetahs, Bulls, Sharks, Leopards, 9,000 days we set aside, says Irvin. I should get an AI, uh, fill in and get some sleep. Says Arthur, I don't think that would be the same though, would it? I feel like I'd have to program it or try and teach it to be like me. And like, yeah, I don't think it would work that well. But maybe one day. It'd still be weird though, wouldn't it? Having a fake Hamish doing a live stream while I sleep. And my Wi-Fi would probably cut out, to be fair. It's cut out quite a bit throughout the last few weeks. Probably do it as soon as I start a stream with an AI. And I was going to pile on the points in the second half. Dead sports fan and morning sister roof. I'm good, thanks. Making my family's uh, post-church feast while I drink my coffee, struggling to wake up. And I was just work ethic, uh, ethic is second to none. Relentless delivering us rugby streams. The man is a champion. And not enough time for an Easter egg hunt this morning, Amish. Sadly not. I mean, I have footage of an old Easter egg hunt that me and George did. Uh, that will not, will not be seen in the light of day. I was dressed as Harry Potter. He was dressed as Santa. I don't know why we did it. I think it was for Halloween. But we decided to do an Easter egg hunt. And that was when I was extremely sleep deprived as well. After like a 40 hours of being awake. And just randomly we were like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do an Easter egg hunt. I should do a charity stay awake. You'll collect uh, stacks for your local char uh, charities. Says Arthur Harrison. And how many chocolate eggs have you been having so far this Easter? I have had a total of zero. I haven't actually had too much time to, I guess, so much as chill out over the Easter break. We've pretty much been editing or streaming throughout the whole weekend. And who do you fancy in this now? Do you fancy uh, in, a, in this going to be a close game? I still honestly feel like the Stormers can bounce back. And I know that for people... If we're going for Ulster in this game, they'll say that I'm biased towards the Stormers. But I just feel like we haven't seen what they can do yet on the field. Ulster, they threw a lot at the Stormers, but their defence stat, only 67% of tackles have been made by Ulster compared to the 88% that have been made by the Stormers. That can massively impact how a team performs. It's kicked off. The Stormers have knocked it on early, though, in the second half. So we will go straight back to where we started, and that will be a scrum in favour of Ulster. Will Ulster melt? Says Vincent, I think at the moment they have been keeping up very well with the pace and they haven't really had to go into deep water as of yet in this game. It seems like maybe they are the team who are more dominating in terms of how they want this game to be played. I just signed in. TVNZ Plus. Says Kristen there. Need a coffee? Get me lucid. Says Ruth. Now 39 minutes still remaining in this contest, so there is plenty of time for either of these sides to still get themselves towards that bonus point. And Kitsuff has yet to mount, so says Ryan Murray. I'm curious to know what happens if they do go with Kitsuff versus Malharba at scrum time. I feel like it's one of those matchups you don't normally expect to see as a Springbok supporter, but could be an option in this contest. Ball about to be fed in by John Cooney. Sitting one from three at the moment in his kicking accuracy throughout this game. Big push from the Stormers. They've come in through the side. A little bit of angling. I think Brock Harris disagrees. Thought that he may have got the better of Tom O'Toole. If you have lucid dreams, check the tension in your neck. Says, cool story, bro. 
Now Nathan Doak after that penalty will be able to kick this one towards the touchline. Do you have the try back? I do indeed, yes. But on the halfway line now, they have got themselves the line out. Just wheeling a bit too much there at scrum times. And I'll be honest, every scrum that we've had between these two sides seems to have some sort of rotation happening. It's hard for the referee to decide who has actually given away those penalties. Rob Hearing throwing that ball in. Nicely taken by Ulster, sacked by Evan Ruiz. Now Doak goes across to McClowski in the midfield. I've backed Ulster plus 14, so I'm definitely going for points on the bookies. Says Vincent. Back across Doak. Yeah, see, for, for Ulster to lose by 14 plus at this stage, they would have had to have a really bad second half performance. I tell you what, Lelian Zas now running forward, gets the offer away to Johan Nili for share. Brock Harris. Tackled by his opposite number, Stephen Kitsoff. The vet uses it quickly. Now Hudsonberg passes out wide to Damien Valimza. Said he was tackled off the ball. But in the breakdown, Storm is looking for the turnover. They weren't able to get it. Back across. Another big shot coming in. I just had the realisation... If Ulster win this game, the only South African side to win this weekend is the Sharks. That's a, that's a stat that I didn't think I'd be saying, but of course this game is long from over. 37 minutes left. Storm is in possession currently only sitting 27 metres out from their try line. And the penalty does go the way of the Stormers. Six not having a clear release there. Come on, Ulster from Switzerland. Says Karma Pitch. What language was it you were speaking earlier on, Karma Pitch? Was it French? Or did I get it slightly wrong? And we kick towards the touchline from Mani Libok. Does get this one downfield to around that 22 metre line. Early try for the Stormers would put them back to an even playing field here. And I wonder what's going on. Uh, if a news presenter worked half as long as Hamish. See his cool story, bro. Now Dweber. To throw this one in for the Stormers. And this is where the lineouts need to be accurate. They have to make sure that they take their opportunities when they are there, the Stormers. And French, sorry, says Carmen Pitch. No, it's all good. I just don't know French, so I wasn't quite sure what you had said. Now looking for this rolling mall. Joseph Dweber joining on to the back. Looking for this ball to be fed through to him. Side entry from number three, that being Tom O'Toole. And a Centurion game, Mani Libok. Looking for that next gap in the back line of Ulster, which there have been a uh, few throughout that first half. Little kick of mine from Hudsonberg. And they will go back for the original penalty in favour of the Storm. As the try is coming, I can tell, says Kristen. And I was aware they come on the storm, it says Sam. Two penalties have been missed by Marnie Libok. I think they have to kick for the corner here, the Stormers. I think that they are in the position where there's 35 minutes left and a try here will change the game for them. It does look like Marnie Libok is going to do just that, kicking it towards the touchline, seeing if they can get themselves that try. Now five metres out from the line. Joseph Dweber, if there's ever a time to get a line out straight here for that man, it is right now. Needs to get it directly to the jumper and then they can try and set this rolling ball up, which they have got the size. And now Joseph Dweber bundling off the back, three metres out from the try line. Paul Devet, short ball to Ivan Ruiz. Looking around for Diamani, there's a knock on from Ruiz in the breakdown. Great work from Ulster, putting in some big shots. It's very uncharacteristic of the Stormers having this many handling errors. Might be head on head contact between Nathan Doak and Dweber there. They are behind, so when I watch you, that is not right, but I don't care, says Kristen. 
Uh, I think they were checking their head on here, but they have said that it's going to be all right. Five metres out from the line for Ulster. Now they are five metres out from their own line. I should clarify, they are just showing the replay from the side angle. They have actually, they got the TMO check. No, they have checked it on the TMO and they have said that it is completely fine. But it's going to be the feed for Ulster. They've just mentioned the last four scrums that we have seen in this contest have all led to a penalty of some sort. Are the Stormers Aussie? They are not. No. But, yeah, they have had a lot of errors throughout this game, unfortunately. And Stormers are French. Says a cool story, bro. About to feed the ball in. Five metres out from their line, so they still do have to try and clear their lines. A penalty here would be ideal. And... Like I just said, there have been a lot of penalties coming from scrum time. Scrum. This time it looks relatively stable for both of these sides. They have been told to use it. Cooney goes back into the pocket to Nathan Doak. He does get in a touch. I was joking. Says that karma pitch. And I thought you were making a reference to the amount of errors that we saw from the Australians throughout their Rugby World Cup. But maybe not. <laughs> now Stormers, they are going to have themselves the line out here. And Ulster at the moment, in terms of their coaching staff, they look a lot more, I guess, relaxed than we're seeing for the Stormers coaching box. Thrown in. Nicely slapped down by Diamani. Gets away to Ruben van Heeren. Flat run from Lely and Zas. Dutch, French, African heritage. Says, cool story, bro. Any Polynesians in Austin? Not that I know of. And their starting side. Not sure if there's any off the bench either. And the Welsh are building a great team for the next cup. Says Vincent. Now Marnie Libok puts it in behind to Damien Valimzi. He's tried to kick him behind and it's gone into touch. So now Ulster once again will be inside of their 22. And also we have there, that's your 36. Your name is, you were right yesterday. Says Nas Williams. Yeah, I said they would have a few throughout the night. Doing the all night. And the Storm is playing like they were still in. Uh, Super Rugby and struggling with the Western Force. Says yikes. Still 30 minutes remaining in this contest. Stephen Kitsoff having a bit of a chat with Rob Hearing. I'm starting to yawn like you from boredom. Says Stefan and Ulster are not tiring. Says Vincent. Well, they haven't had to tire. Like, there's been nothing at this point of the match that the Stormers have thrown at them that has caused them to need to fully use their energy. Like, another knock on. They're almost coming for the Stormers. This time, they were lucky, though. It went backwards after getting the line out still. Now, Diamani throwing himself at the line straight at his opposite number there, Dave McCann. Now, Paul Davet shut down. By Kieran Treadwell. Ulster trying to get over the ball. And they win another penalty. And the thing is. With the amount of stoppages. That we have had throughout this game. With the scrums. With the penalties. It does make it a lot easier. To be able to match a tempo throughout the 80 minutes. Looks like Kieran Treadwell may have hurt himself a little bit. So every club team's never consistent. Besides a few games. Or a few times. So here's yeah, cool story bro. Now Nathan Doak again is going to be kicking this one towards the touchline. And Nathan Doak was just saying that one of the Stormers players were within the 10 metres. As they get that ball into touch. And right, I'm back. Coffee strong. I like my men. Says Ruth. Yeah, it might actually be a finger of Kieran Treadwell. Looks like Salman Morat's got his arm around the referee like they're going for a nice romantic stroll on the beach. And one try in this game, I should have got an early nap. It's horrible, says Vincent. Yeah, it hasn't been the smoothest game. In fact, it's been one of the least smooth games that we've seen of this round of the URC. But I've still had fun, which I, I think is, is the main part. Hopefully you guys have still enjoyed the stream up till this point, even though we haven't had a huge amount of action to call during the game, other than, of course, saying there is a scrum for the 47th time in the contest. Other than that, though, hopefully you guys have still been enjoying some of the action. More palpitations for me tonight. 
says Justin. I was going to start the Tri Festival now. Watch. Says a roof there. Looks like they're about to make a few changes off their bench. Here comes Ben Jason Dixon. Here comes, I believe that is JJ Kutsia. And here comes Franz Malharba. So big changes now. I'm wondering who Ben Jason Dixon will be coming onto the field for in this contest. We're about to find out. Or are we? Are they going to tell us? Uh, where are we? We'll see, it's Willie Engelbrecht. See, I haven't seen that man throughout this game. I mentioned him once, and Franz is going to change the game. Says Justin, and already he's going to get that early opportunity. In this one at a line out time, and yeah, because you're an adult nightmares uh, now, just dreams. This cool story, bro. And also, Stormers seem to be blowing in the wrong direction. They've lost their power in the bluster. Says Roof. Yeah, that's actually Marcel Tennyson, in fact. Sorry, my apologies. Has made his way onto the field. And also, my bro, uh, did you get much, or do you get much sleep on the weekend? No. I think the last sleep that we had was about 25 hours ago. Somewhere around there. Uh, and then... Yeah, there's been none other than that. Other than like early, early on in the weekend, I managed to get like a few sneaky hours in. Next weekend's going to be even more brutal. We have got the sevens all throughout the day and some of the night. The Champions Cup we are covering, also Super Rugby. The benefit that we've got of Super Rugby is there's only four games rather than the six. But it is still going to be a very busy time. So anyone who is new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. How much does Munster win by tonight? Against Cardiff, 40. I don't know about 40. I feel like you know, Cardiff at times can be a decent side. It just depends on what Cardiff side does show up. That's going to be thrown in by JJ Kutz here. And how do you think Scott Robinson will do with the All Blacks this year? I think that it's going to be a bit of a learning process. I don't think they're going to go out of the gates blazing. And I think that it's going to take a bit of time to find the right team that works for Scott Robinson rolling ball. JJ Kutsia has been told to pass it back, gives it away to Paul Devet at the perfect time too, because that was just about to be stolen by Ulster at rolling mall time. Mani Libok now going to be playing halfback, gets it across to Diamani, goes to Evan Ruiz, gets it away now to Damian Belimza, ball on the outside to Warakalam, one more to Lely and Zuss, and at the moment Ulster have made a lot more successful tackles in the second half than they made. Throughout the first, LFG has said, hi, welcome in and predict the month score, please. So I can bet on it, says Vincent. I will not do that because I'll probably get it wrong and then you'll get angry at me for telling you the wrong score. But all I will say as well is if you ever rely on other people's opinions for your bets, you probably shouldn't be betting on that game. Just as a bit of advice. Try has to be becoming... Says Kristen, here comes Marnie Libok. Ball on the inside. He has it extremely late there, so it should be the advantage in favour. Now, short ball. Halant gets it away to Damien Valimza. Pops it up again to Salman Mora on the outside. Hudsonberg. He's got Dan Duplessy with him, but instead it's going to be Paul David on the inside. And another last ditch tackle made. Hudsonberg receives the offload. They've kept it alive for now, the Stormers. But they're five metres out from the line. Evan Ruiz round the side. He tried to slam the ball down. He's either knocked it on or he scored it. That is the big question. Razor Sharp. Uh, get the Flames under the All Blacks on righty. And good Stormers says LFG. So they are going to be checking this one. Is he short for Evan Ruiz? Or has he just scored the opening try? The on-field decision is no try. So, of course, we need clear, conclusive evidence for this one to be overruled. Ivan Ruiz. This angle will show us here. Slams it down short of the line. Can't quite extend out enough. And then from there, does knock the ball along. He's trying the Stormers. They were very close. Ivan Ruiz short of the line. Rounds it and then rolls it. Hang on. Hang on.
Hang on, if this one's gone backwards, then we are in a situation of play on. They might just have to have a quick look at this again. Yes, it is short of the line, but what happens after that? It looks like there was actually separation between Ivan Ruiz and his hand on the ball. So it is going to be the knock on against Ivan Ruiz, but that was very close for the Stormers. Their best chance of the half. It is now going to be the scrum feed for Alston. Yes, says Julian. And also, I watched the original Dumb and Dumber movie again. I couldn't stop laughing. Says Ruth. But Hudsonberg, great run from him then to pull the vet. But they were shut down by Ulster with the last ditch efforts. And nearly, says Julian Moses there. Yeah, very close for the Stormers. It would have got them back into the contest. But still, they sit with the nil on the board. Here we go, Franz Malharba. First scrum going here, dear, with Stephen Kitsoff. Who will get the better of this one? Of course, both of them are relatively friendly with each other, but now they have to try and take this one seriously. Irish defence is superb. And Marcus, my brother, lost his uh, doll on Ulster. And Tri Stormers is disallowed. Come on, Ulster. Says Kristen there. They bind with each other like they would have done many times. And the ball is in. Big push coming from the Stormers. Kitsoff's been broken off the side. And the Stormers win the penalty. And Franz Malharba. Someone mentioned earlier on he could be the man that makes the difference. I think they go scrum again here if you're the Stormers. Rather than going for the corner, I think that this is your chance to go for another scrum. Marnie Libok is looking for a ball. He's asking for one. I thought the two uh, reams were the original. Uh, Dumb and Dumbest says, yikes. Oh, hang on. This might actually be, yeah, they're taking on the three points. Interesting call here from the Stormers. I feel like that was an opportunity to try and really get Ulster under pressure, perhaps have another penalty advantage against them, and then that's when you start to work towards that yellow card. But they have taken on the three here for Money Libok, of course, wants to make sure then it goes over the English idols. Or oh, Eddies. Uh, completely destroyed the Welsh ladies. Ah, uh, the game is finished. 46 points to 12. Or sorry, to 10. Says Richard there. So quite a one-sided affair in that contest. This will be the first points of the day for Marnie Libok and the Stormers. This is 10 metres out. It has to go over. And it has a big round of applause from the crowd. Makes the score now 7 points to 3. And it looks like Herschel Yankees. Is going to make his way onto the field. That is to replace Paul DeVette. Had a good initial line break there alongside Hudson Berg. And also Ben Loder now out onto the field. Is that for Hudson Berg? Oh no, he's on for Dan Duplessis. I was about to say, that seems weird to take off the two players who created your chance of scoring all at one go. It's going to be slapped back by Rob Bellacoon. It's taken by JJ Kurtzia. This one looks like it's going to be an unplayable. So it is going to be the Stormers scrum. And that'll make Stephen Kitsoff very nervous. As now he has to go here dead with Franz Malharba. Once again, I smell a match-fixing rat. Says Cornelius. Who for? Like for the for Ulster or the Stormers? Cornelius. And also Stormers used to be a running side in the early 2000s. Why I like them. And they wore black. See, it's a cool story, bro. Another scrum feed. Chance here for the Stormers. And now the Stormers score as many points as a soccer team would uh, in uh, 50 minutes of play. See, it's yikes. Oh, they're taking kits off off the field. They've decided they've seen enough of one scrum. Now it means that Ulster will have Andrew Warwick, Scott Wilson, and also Tom Stewart onto the field here, but the handicap was 57. So Wales did extremely well. Says Vincent. Herschel Yankee says it's been told by the referee to wait until the scrum is stable before feeding this ball in. Does Warwick have an advantage at scrum time compared to Stephen Kitsoff? Was it because Kitsoff was fatigued, perhaps? That he was struggling? And cool story. Uh, those were the good that came 
Uh, they were Western Province before they came with Fancy Nancy new name. And now, now Stormers, now in behind. Damian Valimza goes across to Ben Loder. Let's put the kick downfield, bounces over the top of the Ulster fullback. And now it's charged down by Loder. Forces it into touch, only five metres out. Uh, this is definitely a match fix. Like, and what? Like, I'm confused. Are you saying that Ulster are fixing it or Stormers are fixing it? Like, just because a game hasn't gone the way that you thought it would doesn't mean it's been match fixed. It just means that one side's playing better than the other. I feel like everyone's very quick to say, oh, there's money under the table. Nice pass. Al high, but knocked on there from Lillian Zas. They'll go back for the original penalty in favour of the Stormers to go Ronaldo will play today. See his dull battery. Right, there is a tackle in the air, though. Taken quickly by Ulster, but they weren't actually ready for it. And JJ Kutsia was. Oh, well, I'm surprised. I fully expected the Stormers to be uh, winning. Says O'Brien. Now, Marnie Libok once again asking for a ball. I don't think they're taking on the three this time. This time it looks like they are kicking it for the corner. Game is going to break open soon. Something has to give. And can feel the tide turning, says Jimbo. And it seems like the home crowd are really starting to get behind their Stormers side. Trying to create some momentum. And only 22 minutes remain, which is still like an acre of time. More than enough for either of these sides to take a lead. Not normal Stormers play, but that doesn't mean that they've accepted money. That just means that they've been making errors. We've got to remember, one of their recent performances as well was a little bit shaky up against the Bulls. They did lose that game 40 points to 22. And the reason that they lost that game was because of handling errors, and we've just seen another one at line-out time. The Stormers are celebrating for the try, but they knocked it on in the mall once again. It is hurt, and then that is about the 12th handling error that we've seen the Stormers fixed it. Says Vincent, just because you're going to lose your money, although I think in this case you're actually going to make your money, so I, I thought that you'd be relatively happy. With this Stormers performance. One moment, I'm about to sneeze, so I will mute myself. Right, we are good. Jemmo, is that uh, the tide or the tide? Uh, not much push in there yet. And I all unsurprised. And full score prediction is 17 points to 15. Gonna hand it to the Cheetahs. Uh, they never changed their style. Says, cool story, bro. Bless you, mate. Says, Dan Bota. Now, Ulster. About to feed this ball in to the scrum. They are five metres out from their own try line. It looks like they are going to go off the back with Nick Timoney. Trying to make a few extra metres here. Storm has used the time. Says, William Moses. And yeah, it just seems like they've been very rushed. Throughout this games. I mean, okay, seri uh, seriously, guys, why are South African fans so salty all the time? Says Brian. Ben Loder going to be taking that one nicely for the Stormers. Another chance for them to be able to attack. Diamani. He's had a quiet game. This is where he really needs to step up. And yes, the Stormers has been fixing it since Super Rugby days. Says Yikes. Ben Jason Dixon finds the pop pass up from his back. Goes to Marnie Lebok. Eva Ruiz wasn't ready to run that, but he decides he'll throw himself at the line anyway. Herschel Yankees. Now goes across to Ben Jason Dixon. Now Brock Harris offloading up to Lillian's ass. Little kick on behind from Warwick Land. Sits up for Marnie Lebok. 12 metres out from the line. That's a penalty advantage, and that's probably a yellow card offence, I would argue. He was offside. He apologises there, but that's got to be close to a yellow, doesn't it? Diving over the middle of the breakdown, he does get the yellow card. I wish you never sleep. Not a lot on the weekends, to be fair, but it's going to be a deliberate knockdown, a yellow card for Ulster. And now the Stormers, they are back in the box seat, ladies and gentlemen. Big chance here. For them to not only score one try, but perhaps score multiple. And Leboc and Ruiz are having a nightmare. And Stormers should take it, says Outlaw and just arrived. Uh, which way is it turning to the Stormers, says uh, Brian. I would say with their yellow card, definitely into their favour. Here is the turning point, says Dan Borta. 
Hello, Brian. Are you right on, baby? Storm should take it, says Outlaw. And one's kicked it a touch from Marnie Lubbock. Will be five metres out with another line-out attempt here. Looks like Brock Harris might be close to coming off the field. He's had a big shift here. And number one. I feel like he's one of those players who have been out there on the field. He hasn't done anything that's been hugely, like, I guess, eye-catching for the camera per se, but he's done a lot out there on the park. Just about to have this line out five metres out from the line. I have to tread lightly. An air roof uh, with Ireland visiting South Africa this year. Says Jimbo and someone has to shake up this boring game. Says Roof, but now five metres out for the line. Jadia Kutsi, of course, wants to get this one straight. And if he can do that, he's going to be in a great position to be able to drive towards the try line. Well, the storm is stolen by Ulster. At line out time, they had another chance and they've blown it again. But defender says January in there as well. And let's roast this bone. Says cool story, bro. But Ulster now back in position. 10 metres out from the line. Cooney will be rolling this one back. Almost charged down by Ruben van Heeren. Does manage to get that ball into touch once more. Another position for the Stormers just outside of the 22. And Stormers losing to themselves tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, like, handling has just been extremely poor. It's South African match fixing. It's been stopped. And... Uh, out uh, in two, says Vincent. But it, it's not match fix. They're just playing badly. Like, you can't always put playing badly down to match fixing. Or else you'll never enjoy a game of rugby ever again in your life. Because every time someone drops the ball, you'll be like, oh, who's being paid? So, like, you just got to enjoy the rugby for the rugby, really. And just, you know, like, the Stormers still have a good chance of being able to win this game. Even if there's the match fixing that you're saying... Like, I don't understand why they would match fix it if they have a very good chance of still winning. And still always have the upper hand in the scrums. And yet they go for the line outs. Crazy on field management, says Paul Terry. I agree that one five metres out, but they took the three. That's another knock on this time from Ben Jason Dixon. Does get it wrong. And Jimbo will be a huge battle. I think the Irish will have enough petrol in the tank. Well, said Amish, says Dan Borta. And 14 to 10, I'll still win. Is the prediction there from Kristen. Now Cooney goes across. The Nathan Doak, the advantage is over. And once again, it has been cleared at the moment. It is survival for Ulster trying to use up as much time of that yellow card as they can. I will mention anyone who is new to the channel. Of course, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated for you all being here because their coach is backing uh, the minus 14. He doesn't want them to win by more than that, says Vincent. No, you're the one who's backing that. That was said earlier on that you backed it. A moment, I'm about to sneeze again. We are good. And I wonder how South Africa managed to fix every World Cup match. This is good story, bro. But yeah, like, they've struggled in this game, the Stormers. Everyone will admit that. But they've still got, I would say, a decent chance of still winning. And Roof Island is a wet, a cold, wet sea level country. Playing in South Africa is a huge physical challenge for us. Says Jimbo, it'll be huge of us to hang on for a win. Yeah, but still another 16 and a half minutes left. And I feel like that time's going to go extremely slowly. Both sides need to have less errors. Hashtag uh, shave your beard. Says Kristen there. And also I think Hamish deserves an awesome rest soon. Uh, sleep like a baby. Says Roof. But JJ Kutz here now. Alenza is a proper team. They wouldn't dare match fix. They love their rugby. Says Vincent. I think we just worked out whereabouts you're from, haven't we? Now this one's going to be available for the Stormers. Starting to get this rolling mall marching forward. I think that Leinster, though, if you're talking about match fixing, imagine getting knocked out and not making it to the final of the URC two years in a row. But instead the Stormers did. Like, so, if any fixing's happening, surely it's Leinster, isn't it, Vincent? Now, uh, Evan Ruiz. Now, going across to Herschel, Yankees. 30 metres out, another knock on. This time it's from Yankees. It's just hit in the foot. The couch is, is match fixing, couch potatoes. And Crusaders missing Razor. Good to see them back to winning against the Chiefs, says Dan Bota. And it'll be huge if I was to hang on for the win. 
As Dawes is making lots of faults, uh, says Workshop uh, Vervy. Hopefully I said that correctly, or I might have said that slightly wrong. Is it Verway for that last part? But yeah, every time that it goes into the breakdown and match fix BS, ignore that BS, says Lorenz. And also, it's not a World Cup Islander in with a chance. I wouldn't be surprised if they won. See, it's cool story, bro. And Ligeris, 11 from the Stormers. But believe it or not, Ulster have still had the 8 in this contest as well. Unless the power of the URC because their focus is European Cup in spring. See, so Jimbo there. And also match fixing again. I'm delighted they're going to be published everywhere for this You Boys Can't Play Rugby. See, so Vincent. Sorry, I'm going to have to read that again. My brain slightly didn't function for it. Match fixing again. I'm delighted they're going to be... They are going to be punished, I think that is, everywhere from for this, you boys can't play rugby, says Vincent. You're talking about the Stormers, Vincent, I assume. Maybe. And how many minutes left in the bin, says Jay. They have still got another five and a half minutes left of the Ulster player being off the field. Now, currently a bit of kicking tennis. That one's out on the full. But it was inside of the 22 for Warwick Lant. So it does count as a legal kick, per se. And we'll be just outside. Yeah, you're a Stormer follower, says Vincent. I'm not. Like, just because I say that the Stormers have a chance of winning, like, ever since I said that at the start of the game, you decided that you didn't like me. And, I mean, I'm surprised you've stuck around for this long. But, yeah, like, just because I say that a team's got a chance of winning, like, it's called a prediction. You can have them. And uh, you know what, Amish? I'd rather watch midget porn than this match fix game, <laughs> says Yikes. And now nicely claimed by Ulster and provides proofs, says a blues neck. The installers need a good 10 minutes, just need to click, says Dan Botha. And the thing is, as poorly as they have played in this game, they can still win it. Oh, there's a bit of swearing going on out on the field. I feel like someone wasn't too happy. That sounded like an Irish accent telling a player to get out of the breakdown. I stuck around because you're a great commentator, pal. Says Vincent. Now I'll be a roll back. Cooney. Wall was out. Damn, there's players yelling all over the place. At the moment, I feel like the tensions are high with the last 13 minutes. There is a frustrated Stormer side out there on the field. Last test island one in South Africa. A uh, certain expat into the uh, the career of a certain uh, bot fullback. Says Jimbo. Now that one's going to be kicked high. From Cooney, taken by Lelian Zas. Bus almost through that tackle attempt, but in the end, dragged down by Tom Stewart. Now what a Kalant goes across to Marnie Libok. Ben Loder has space to use the players on his outside, but decides to take the contact instead. Yankees goes back across to Ruben van Gieren. Pass up there to Marcel Tennyson that's knocked on again by the Stormers. Although, I think it's going to be play on by the looks. It's going to be Rob Valacoon, who has got that ball there. And that changed quicks. Says Blues Nate. And if the Storm is going to try in the last minute, will the fixing hysteria stop? Says Brian. Okay, the ball came out the side, so there is going to be a penalty here. By the sounds of it, from the referee. They have said... I'm not sure what that one is for. I believe it was the initial handling error. As we go, one moment, I'm about to sneeze again. The hay fever is kicking me in the face for this morning. And we are better again. Uh, is it raining in Cape Town? The Bulls can't handle the ball. Or, sorry, the Stormers can't handle the ball. No, there's no rain at all. Uh, Blues Nate Rugby is Irish. See, that's the thing. I have some nice Irish viewers, so I don't want to offend them. But there's so many things I could say, Vincent, to that. Like, like they won the Six Nations, which is very good. But, you know, like, we got some nice Irish people, so I don't want to hurt their feelings. That ball's going to be not going in. Another free kick going the way of Ulster. And still as yell a ding Says William Moses, and we are playing 14 men, and we cannot do anything, says Worship, or Workshop, sorry. And unfortunately, it is just that handling. 12 handling errors in total for the Stormers throughout this game. We are the best team in the world, says Vincent. And there as well. 
going to be nicely taken by what a Kalant. So that next pass gets it to Loda. Ruben van Yeren. Can the backline function? Here we go. Stormers have the chance, but Ulster defending extremely well, like they have all the way through the second half. I think that they've definitely stepped up. That was a forward pass from the Stormers this time. Have you been to all your major provinces? So that's a cool story, bro. And also we have got there. It took them 100 years to get five wins against the mighty All Blacks. Says yikes. A relaxed Stormers will win, says Outlaw. It's going down to the wire at the moment. The Stormers are still only considered as $2.40 underdogs, ladies and gentlemen. Which is quite interesting with the fact that throughout this whole game, from everything we've seen, would say that they should lose this game. But they're still staying in it. They are still within seven. And a non-successfully converted try would still win them this contest. And Stormers coach is going to have a heart attack. They keep making these basic errors, says Dan Botta. i got time off. Only 45 seconds remaining of that Ulster yellow card. And Stormers coach, I know I read that one, and let's pray. Uh, because the mistakes ish. Says a workshop there. And now another scrum feed for Ulster. And Knox is like wides in cricket. There's outlaws, and yeah, there's been a lot of them throughout this game. Cooney puts the ball in, though. They've still got the 14 men on the field. He goes back to Nathan Doak, who's actually slipped over while going for that kick. Still going to be a relatively solid one. Goes into the 22 of the Stormers. Now, what a Kalant does kick it off his left boot. Looking for the touchline. Doesn't manage to find it. Here comes Cooney with a box kick of his own, putting a high Doak chasing after it. He's probably the man of the match for Ulster, I would say, if they win this game and hearing. Has got that ball back. In fact, it's Tom Stewart. Now Doak going for the cross kick. It sits up there for the Stormers, though. Send it back across field. Marcel Tennyson, some good hands from him. Gets away to Valimza. Now Lillian Zuss not able to bust through. And when Ulster get back to 15, they might sneak another try, says Brian. Now oh, what a Kalant. Got numbers with him. Evan Ruiz is there on the inside. Forward pass again from that man, although that one has not been called. So they can play on. Franz Malharba goes across to Ben Loder. Eight minutes remaining in this contest. Only 14% Ulster win on the pole. I mean, I went for the Stormers. Says Brian. Now Hudsonberg in open space. Passes on the outside to Lillian Zuss. Another great tackle made by Rob Balacuni. He's probably another player that you could lick at. Well, look at, not lick. But look at as an option for player of the match. Advantage. Goes the way of the Stormers. 25 metres from the line. Marnie Libot going across. Hudsonberg away to Evan Ruiz, who breaks through three tackles. Finds the pop pass up, but can't get their next offload away, and they'll go back for another penalty. Do they take the three here, the Stormers? Or do you go for the seven? you got to go for the seven, don't you? But they have blown many seven opportunities. Uh, Ruiz plays NFL with all those four passes. Says Dan Borta. And when I was to get back to 15, they drop goal it. And also we have got the yeah, South Africa teams. Uh, the worst against 14, says Cool Story Brian. Take the three, says Dan Borta. Do they take the three, though? That is the question. Because if they take the three, they are still down by one. And imagine they don't get another opportunity. So they have to pretty much go for the seven. They will be kicking this one towards the corner. The big job here for Marnie Libok, of course, is to make sure that that ball goes out. But this is one of those games that has gone from being extremely low scoring to still low scoring, but extremely close at the end of the match. Looks like there is another change being made. Marcus Raya going off the field or onto the field for Matty Raya. And three uh, for me, three for you. Says Blues Nana, not enough time. Big line out. Says Brian. Sounds like they are just making some more changes here for both of these sides. Quickly grab the water bottle too. Marnie Libok kicking this one towards the corner. Dark day for South African rugby. I mentioned about it earlier on. If the Stormers lose this game, the only South African side to get themselves a win in this round is the Sharks. And they are currently sitting on 13th. In three or four minutes, Dan. 
says O'Brien. Yeah, there's not a lot of time at all. Seven minutes remaining, though. A little bit more time in those few minutes. JJ could see a five metres out for the line. Thrown in now to the front. Nicely taken by the Storm as this rolling mall looks very well set. And they haven't dropped it this time. They go over and they score there, the Stormers. Right near the end of the game, they've taken the lead. Oh, here's the running passing rugby, says Roof. But it is Evan Ruiz who has been able to cross the try line for his side here. He hasn't had the best game, but he stepped up in a moment where it mattered the most. That is his 13th career try in the URC. And that might be one of the most important ones, definitely of this season. But beautifully done. Off the rolling mall. Anyone who is new to the channel, of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are back next week and we're going to get to see the Stormers in action. See how they bounce back in their next contest up against La Rochelle. Good call, everyone. I need to grow up here. That's why I don't coach rugby. Says Dan Borta. And my praying help the Stormers get another try and a luck, uh, unlucky Ulster. Says Kristen. Although this game is not over once again. Ulster may not have had a single attacking play, really, throughout this whole second half. But if Marnie Leboc misses this kick, or even if he gets it over... The Stormers are only ahead by three. And that gives Ulster the chance to get this back to a draw. That's a disgraceful, shocking score, says Roof. And this was something inevitable about that. Uh, all the fixing conspiracy theorists can go home now, says Brian. Now, Manny Libok, he's got 442 career points to his name. He's got 10 seconds on the shot clock, so it does have to hurry up here. Four seconds remaining now. And Manny Libok is running in three, two, one. He used up every second and gets it down the middle when it mattered most. That will make the score now 10 points to 7 in favour of the Stormers. And that's why they must get another try. And also we're going to come on Mani and try Evan Ruiz. Says Cornelius. Uh, Ruiz and Leboc are the best. Says Paul Terry. And Ulster uh, is going to score in the last minute try. Says Kristen and hurry up Stormers. Let's those this. There's a Blues, now it's going to be slapped back by Balakoon, but it goes into touch. Ulster are now considered as the $7 underdogs in this contest, ladies and gentlemen. That is the largest underdog that they have been ever since the start of this match. The shot clock freaks Marnie uh, out no end, says, was there from Dan Borta. Now the Stormers have got themselves the line-up. They are taking their time now, moving over to that line-up to take it. And remove Stormers from the URC. Hashtag no more match fixing. <laughs> says, uh, cool story, bro. Armani's touch find is a perfect place. Kicks uh, need improving. Says Alex. Yes, cross kicking is normally perfect as well. Right there, man. It's going to be slapped back by the Stormers. Herschel Yankees very close to the touchline. Penalty here for Ulster would give them the opportunity to either go for the three points for the draw or go for the seven points for the win. But at this point, the Stormers are still in position inside of their 22 and no advantages have been given. Got to kick this one high. And Herschel Yankees sends it downfield. Does go into touch. This will be about 30 metres out. Ulster have got another opportunity. Can't help the Stormers, says Outlaw. And sometimes you do need a little bit of luck. To be fair, though, it was a very cynical play. And fully send it, lad. Uh, fully sick in it and go the storm and says world chance twice and card and money money or money money says a roof and there as well but now the line out throw this needs to be straight from Tom Stewart if it's not then it gives the Stormers the perfect opportunity to close out this game and it's stolen at line out time so in a way it was too straight and now big break and run from JJ Skutsia goes for the 50-22 and he's nailed it 50-22 from the replacement number 16. You do not see that every day. And now the Stormers, they will have the opportunity to go on and get themselves another try here. One more shot for Ulster. I think that that has probably been taken away now. JJ Kutsia breaking the line and then goes for the 50-22. What even makes a replacement hooker think of doing that? Yes, you play the territory game, but the fact that he had the wherewithal to be able to decide... Right, I'm now going to kick this downfield and look for that territory game. Massive, massive work from JJ Kutsi. He's now got the opportunity to throw this ball in for his side. Less than two and a half minutes left on the clock. And it 
does now go into the front. Nicely claimed by the Stormers. Looks like they're looking for their second of the contest. The Rolly Moore starts up. They are only two metres out. Herschel Yankees pops the pass up. The Storm is one metre from the try line here. Yankees having to dig that one out from underneath the breakdown. They've got the advantage as well here, the Stormers. So if they're strategic, they can almost use up the rest of the time in this game. Money Libok with the sniping run of his own. Herschel Yankees still playing advantage. Damian Valimza, wide cut out past the loader. He's knocked it on. And they'll go back for another penalty in favour of the Stormers. Stormers to shut this down now. Says Dan Borton, I believe, for the Stormers here. They will line up the three points. They've got 90 seconds remaining, so they won't be able to use up all of the time remaining. All the time is off. And JJ sees the spring box opening at two. Says Alex and also, uh, come on guys. Says Workshop and also work there. Well done, the Stormers. Although they made hard work of it. Yeah, it's one of those games that they were never completely out of when it came to the scoreboard. What do they decide to do here? They've actually called for the scrum here, the Stormers. Interesting. I would have thought, oh no, I guess with the fact that they still had enough time left on the clock, they needed to use up a bit more. If they get themselves a penalty now, of course, they would go for the three points and that would take them out of the game. And forget the try, says cool story, bro. Looks like Rob Balakoon is down currently. So time has been turned off again. Stormers, come on, boys. Says Workshop and it says Stormers 39, Ulster 10. Says Yikes. Yeah, I think a lot of people were anticipating a much higher scoring game between these two sides. Ballsy call, says Dan. But then saying that, I guess, theoretically, you win yourself a penalty here, you get the victory. If you don't win the penalty, but you still manage to get yourself some sort of try, that will also put you in a good position to go on and win this game. So I can understand it to a certain extent, seeing as they can't use up the rest of the time that was on the clock with this scrum, or with that kick at the post, I should say. Now ball's about to be fed in by Herschel Yankees. Oh, little bit of disruption there. Andrew Warwick, not happy with where this feet was placed. So it is gonna be a scrum reset again here. Yeah, territory uh, management. Says Dan Botha, that is also true. Now, also time management being used by the Stormers. Only 15 seconds now left on the clock. 10 seconds. Goes down to 8. And it will be up to the full-time siren by the time this ball goes in. Penalty won by the Stormers. Marnie Libok, I believe, will have the final kick of the day. And is this a Stormers game plan, says the Rens. They have managed to win that penalty, so exactly what they wanted. They are going to go for the shot, Marnie Libok. They are celebrating, of course. He has to make sure he doesn't hit the post here, or else this game will be play on. Should be a nice, easy kick, though, for Libok to close out the day and give the Stormers the victory by six. And thanks, Damage, for keeping us happy. Wonderful commentary. Bye-bye, everyone. Been fun. Tears the roof there. And that's all she wrote, says Dan Borta, and many penalties for the Stormers, says Outlaw. And then when looking at the head-to-head -head in terms of the handling errors, of course, the Stormers did have a lot more throughout this contest. Looking at the penalty count, I'll also have it here somewhere. One moment. Go there, and we go here. The penalty count is 11 against Ulster compared to the 5 against the Stormers for this match by Marnie Libok. Now lining up this kick. And he has got it over. And the Stormers win this game 13 points to 7. Now they will not be impressed with their performance. They will feel like there was a lot that they could have improved on. And they have to make a quick turnaround. Because in one week's time, they're facing La Rochelle aside. Who have also been struggling a little bit in the French top 14. But have got... Champions Cup gold under their belt before. Thanks for the coverage, mate. I appreciate your efforts. Says Dan Borta. And there, and that's it. Thanks, Hamish. Great commentary as always. Says Brian. And the end, Stormers respecting Kitsy, uh, but not beating them by 20. Says Alex. And I was on. Yes, yes, yes. Says Workshop. And also, Stormers uh, gave a wine farm for the riff. Gave a wine farm. And also, Hamish, thanks for your positive attitude. Says Peter Mason. And also, yes, boys, show us the money. 
Cheers, I'm losing that and get some sleep. Hamish Munster on TV next for us. Cheers, Jimbo. And also Storm is wanting it more, says Kristen. I mentioned about it all throughout that game. They were never out of the contest. They were only really one try away from getting into it. And that try came for Ivan Ruiz at a most important time. Meters made, we saw more made by the Stormers in this game. Tackles made, we saw more made by the Stormers. And in fact, the position actually went back in their favour. So they had the much better second half. And even with all those handling errors, we're still able to turn it into 13 unanswered points that then led to them pulling off the victory. Close game, well done, Stormers. It's a sign of a good sign. Or it's a sign of a good side uh, when they can find a way to win, even if they're off their game. And yeah, they can certainly not be off their game next week, though, up against La Rochelle. We are going to be covering that game on the channel as well, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are new to the channel, be sure, of course, to hit that subscribe button. And yes, says Sean, the player of the match for this contest. They are just showing him now. It is going to be either Ruben van Heeren or Salman Moura. Yep, it is Ruben van Heeren. He had 100% tackle accuracy throughout that first half, making 10 from 10. And thanks, Kiwi lads. Says Kupido. And uh, there as well. Yeah, he's had to put in a big shift there. Ruben van Heeren as the number five. And uh, Hamish Sleep, uh, well, sweet dreams. And also Buddy Vincent McMahon and his conspiracy theories. And uh, come on. And when they got the penalty, I thought they would score a try and win 17 points to seven. And go the Stormers, says Farney. And there as well. And game done, says Bullet. It is indeed. Hopefully it comes up with full time. They've mentioned Ruben van Heeren there said that it was a bit dewy underfoot. And I think that's why some of the handling errors occurred. But certainly not as many as they had throughout this game. A lot of mistakes. Close game. Well done. The Storm is a sign of a good side. Uh, when they can try and find a way to win. And when they're playing well off their game, says Sam. But nonetheless, I do thank you all very much for tuning in next weekend. We are going to be back with plenty more action, ladies and gents. We have got the Champions Cup games between Bulls and Lyon, as well as the Stormers versus La Rochelle. We have got the Sevens happening in Hong Kong. We are also covering Super Rugby on the channel. And plenty more matches all along the way. Good evening, guys. Just came from Mosselbay. Um, Hopefully I said that correctly, which I think I have really mispronounced. And go the Stormers. And take care, Vincent. Match fixing, match fixing. WWE says I lose Nate, and they're a great show, mate. As usual, says Outlaw. Thank you very much, mate. And unless I do thank you all very much for tuning in. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all for the next one.